Cheers, guys. Apex 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek and VR News for July 14th. So before I start, just want to throw this out if anybody's interested. Um, I get the sense that most of you are pretty tech savvy just based on the conversations we have, right? With that said, I've got a, uh, I've had a bunch of questions about building VR ready PCs. And I know it's completely biased because I'm an IT guy, right? But I personally think that everybody who has at least some passion in technology, and it doesn't have to be this overriding thing, but if you got even just a little bit of interest, you owe it to yourself to build your own gaming PC. Uh, if you're flush with cash, super lazy, could give two shits, sure, buy a ready-made PC. There's all kinds out there. Falcon Northwest, Alienware, you name it, right? But if you're not, try building one. Not only can you save a few bucks, but you can put all the components that you want into the PC. And that's one of those things that people don't often realize if they buy a name brand PC. It's not like the old days where you bought a Commodore 64, you know, or an Amiga or Atari ST, etc., etc., Specky. No. Back then they were different. Now you could buy something that's Falcon Northwest or Alienware and most of the components are name brand components picked elsewhere that you yourself could pick off the shelf without paying the premium for the name and put your own damn sticker and name on it, right? It isn't complicated. So if there's any interest in that, that PC behind me is going to be upgraded probably within the next couple of weeks. I'll make a video, show the process. I'll keep it tight to, you know, six to eight minutes, but just show the different things that go into it. I think anybody out there who's contemplated it, you'd be really pleasantly surprised how easy it actually is. It's like rocket surgery, no probs. With that said, like I said, most of you seem pretty tech savvy. So I don't know how many that would actually be useful for. But uh, either way, you owe it to yourself at least once in your lifetime. Build the PC. You can put all the components that you want in. You know, my brother's a mechanic. I don't know the first thing about cars, except it needs gas and I need to take it in for maintenance once in a while, right? And it's Greek when he talks to me. But when I see him do stuff, it's like, okay, that's how you change the oil filter. That's not so bad. It's the same with PC stuff, guys. For anybody who hasn't tinkered with it, it's, it's not complicated. All right, on to the news. So I'm going to have a... It's not a really a gameplay video. It's a tech demo video, which I'll release after this, just showing off VR Funhouse, which is a newly released tech demo. The blurb says it's mini games, but let's face it, it's a tech demo. They're showing off uh, Pascal features, right? So the demo is for people who have 1060s, 1070s, 1080 cards, and essentially it uses those special features that we talked about. And that's where I said, look, you're not just comparing the frame rate to an older GPU, right? You're also comparing the features it has because if, and it is a big if, people start using those VR works and Pascal features, you're going to see, even though on a specific game, it might get the same frame rate, on the VR specific games, it's gonna have unsurpassed performance because it's optimized for that. So had a look at it. Honestly, for me personally, seeing everything that the demo offers within about 10 minutes, you're done, you shut it off, you probably will uninstall it to free up hard drive space. But what it does do is show you the cool effects, right? There's a goop effect, so you get to see the liquid, fire, physics is amazing in there. Uh, a little embarrassing with uh, hitting the baseballs, but uh, well, I did edit out the first one, but then I missed all the baseballs on the second except one, so it didn't really matter. But anyways, it, yeah, it's designed to show off the CUDA cores, the Pascal chipset. So if you've got one of those three cards, have a look, um, or just check out the video and then don't bother <laughs> because you'll probably see most of what's in there. No, no, I take that back. Then again, you know, it's worth the five, 10 minutes to experience it because the, the effects are cool the first time. They just don't have a long life to them, right? 
And uh, that was, sorry, that was NVIDIA's Lightspeed Studio, kind of their dev arm that created that. So next I want to talk about an early access game. You guys know my kind of rants on early access or feelings in general, right? They're still worth taking a look at. And from time to time, they are worth supporting. You know, I've made no bones about Kickstarter. There's about five, six Kickstarters I've supported, but I did my research. They were companies that I knew were going to deliver based on their track record, or it was never a certainty they would deliver, but my gut instinct told me it was likely based on that track record in exile, right? Bard's Tale is their third game. I supported them for Wasteland 2, the Torment game, which isn't out yet, and the Bard's Tale, which isn't out yet. I've also, um, the guys who did Baldur's Gate, what the heck's that other RPG back that, that was released. So it can be done, right? And yes, even the odd indie dev, if it looks like they've got some experience or promise and there's no scope creep, support it. No problem with that. But this game, Raw Data, it's basically, what makes it really interesting is it's kind of a... Uh, uh, multiplayer wave game and that seems to be the huge rage with vr probably because it's a fairly easy thing to program right you basically and, and let's face it it's arcade gaming 101 right put yourself somewhere uh you don't have to create a lot of scenery maybe you're in a warehouse maybe you're on a lakefront whatever it may be and then just have waves of monsters head towards the player that need to be dispatched with variety of skills, abilities, items. So you can kind of build on that, make it seem cosmetically involved, right? But at the end of the day, it's not near as involved as having to build an entire game with multiple set pieces. It's an arcade game disguised as a VR experience. And if the price is right, that's not bad. I like Space Pirate Trainer. Uh, that cost me, I can't remember what it was, about 10 bucks. But it's fun. It's like an arcade game. And it was fun enough that, you know what, if he never comes out with the other stuff, it would suck. But at least I enjoyed it, right? So have a look at that. Like I said, it's wave-based. And uh, the devs have thrown abilities and items in there. So you're not, like in Space Pirate Trainer, just stuck with the same guns albeit with a couple of different shot types, right? The next thing I want to talk about is VR film tips. That there's, so there's an article on Upload VR, which talks about 360 degree films in VR. And we had an awesome discussion, I think it was Chris and, and somebody else, in the comments section, and we talked about 360. And one of the things he mentioned was having a 180 solution right because you don't want to be having to look back if there's action in there and literally that was our discussion yesterday and what do you know today there's an article that addresses exactly that so what they've done is and, and what makes it kind of cool is they've taken the 360 degrees so if you think of 360 degrees like a pizza right a circle and you've got a person on the couch wearing a head HMD looking directly in front of them. So the top of that pie or circle, right? Picture like a triangle like this and the point of the triangle being the person, that's about 90 degrees. They recommend all the action of the film be within that 90 degrees, right? Rarely will you have stuff happen beside you, but so all the leading action is in front of you in that 90 degree window, right? But you will have moments where the filmmaker, through the effects and the process of the plot, draws you, right, to the 235 degree mark on either side. And that's such a cool thing because it makes the audience still feel involved, right? They're going to forget about, okay, you know what? I haven't looked directly behind me. It's going to feel just as 360, even though technically it's 235 degrees, right? They're not going completely back. There will be stuff, there'll be a scene to look at back there, but the leading action is gonna be in front with instances where the director purposely gets your attention to have you 
watch the action pan out to the side of you, right? Either side, about 235 degrees, I think it was. So a really cool article. And it's nice to see them thinking about the limitations of 360, which sounds obvious, right? But I thought that was a nice creative solution in terms of packing your content, you know, base it on 360 degrees. There is stuff that's going to happen to the side, but the majority happens in front of you with almost nothing behind you. I think that's a perfect formula. I think that will work really great. And uh, like I said, I'll put the link in the description. Have a read of that. I'm curious what the rest of you think. And no sooner do I mention the news article about Sony with their new VR game art boxes, than they got to backtrack a little bit because what they had done, and if you go back to the screenshot that I included in the video, there's a little inset picture. Actually, you might not see it in there, but if you Google Sony VR art, never mind, I'll put a link in the description. You'll see what I mean, but there's a required hardware sticker and it shows the Sony HMD and it shows the move controllers, but it doesn't show a dual shock. So immediately there was an uproar and questions. Oh my God, is it not going to be dual shock compatible? Are we forced to buy the move? So Sony was forced to issue a statement that, you know what? Most games, they don't say all, but most, the majority. And to me, if you say most, I'm thinking 80 to 95%. To me, that's most, right? Will support the dual shock four. So that's good to hear. And... You know, I know it's the third device, but I'm curious because I can't wait to compare some of the experiences uh, on my old PlayStation, right? For the channel, I'll probably buy the new PlayStation just so I can contrast that as well. But I've heard initial reports like E Valkyrie, perfect example, right? You can play it on Revive on Vive and the Rift natively. Apparently, that's quite a bit pixel, you know, more pixel aided on the Sony HMD than it is on the PC, leading people to speculate that, in fact, on the older PS4, as most of us feared, they're not hitting the 1080p mark, even with their reprojection technology, so, or algorithm, really. So that'll be interesting to see, you know, how, how are the games going to compare? Because really, consoles have just become Look, they're a step away from being PCs. And if you look at Xbox's whole gaming from Microsoft, their whole Xbox gaming plan is eventually to make those games compatible on Windows, any Xbox game, right? You look at the components inside. You've got PC manufactured video cards, USB ports. It's, it's a PC. The days where, you know, they were using RISC processors and all kinds of different hardware and proprietary joystick formats. That's a thing of the past, you know. Now, a lot of the USB devices are cross-compatible. The Thrustmaster 4 that I purchased, which is on the desk behind me there, it's marketed mostly for the PS4, but there's a little inset, also PC compatible. Well, of course it should be. Somebody just has to write a driver but because it's a USB device, it should work, right? And it does. So uh, funny that they had to backtrack on that, but glad they did because that's the kind of damage control you want to do quickly before stuff spreads. And if they were fibbing on that, well, let's just say there's going to be fast and furious uh, development work to rectify that. But I don't suspect that was the case because we probably have heard from devs already. All right, guys, that's it for the news today. I was looking for my beer. I will post that other video up shortly. Like I said, it's just a tech demo, nothing exciting. It just shows what VR uh, works and Pascal is capable of via NVIDIA's Funhouse tech demo. Cheers, guys.